Hey there, this is Michael Williams here with Show Home Pal. I've been working on <laughs> practicing saying his name correctly for the <laughs> last few minutes. And just wanted to do uh, a little interview here. Um, I'm going to introduce him and, and just have him tell you a little bit about what he does. But I've been working with you for about how many weeks now? I think around 10 weeks. Around 10 weeks. Right, right, right. So what we're going to do today is, is a brief interview, hopefully six or seven minutes or so. And we just want to talk about kind of where you started from, what prompted you to want to do something about your speech now, why you chose me, because you could have chosen anyone. Um, talk a little bit about your journey, like some of the struggles that you've had as you've been working on your speech. And then talk about where you are now, how things are for you now. So, as we get started, you know, first I want to thank you uh, for being willing to do this interview with me. Why don't you tell me and tell us a little bit about what you do? Hi. Um, so, I am a PhD student in physics at Iowa State University. I joined here last fall and I have been working since uh, August, so around six months, um, six or eight months. And yeah, so that's pretty much about what I do nowadays. Yeah. yeah. So tell me a little bit about your responsibilities. I think it, that you have some pretty significant speaking responsibilities that you told me about when we first got started. Yeah, right. So I have to teach classes and, and that is around, you can say, eight, eight hours a week. Wow. So that involves a lot of speaking to my students. And then also we have got help room sessions where students just come around and ask you their questions. And I am supposed to, well, I should, I am, I try to explain uh, whatever the answers are or if they understand something uh, try to explain those other than that I also have my research and I need to present my research to my research group mm. so that also involves kind of presentations and speech so yeah, yeah that is pretty much just activities regarding speech that I have for as a part of my work okay okay so uh Tell me why, or, or tell me what life was like before you started this process. Well, before I started, uh, like I said, uh, for example, when I came here, I had to teach from August. So um, I think we started in January sometime. Mm -hmm. So between that time, August to January, I wasn't very comfortable while I was teaching my class. I mean, I was... I would get stuck, and it would not be a. It wasn't a really good, good way of teaching. I would say uh, there would be a lot of interruptions, and I couldn't always get the idea to that, that I wanted to say to my students. So I was really suffering from uh, not being able to teach well. I was really feeling very bad that I am doing such a poor job. And other than that, so far I've been stuttering for a long time uh, since I was a kid. So when I was talking to someone or to some stranger or even to my friends, I'd get stuck uh, every now and then and I used to get embarrassed in some situations and I didn't really want to go and introduce myself to strangers or start talking to a large audience because I was really conscious and I always thought that I will get stuck and so I never really expressed myself. That was the problem that I had to face before I started uh, this training thing. Yeah. <laughs> you, said, you said this training thing. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I I'm just <laughs> well, before I started, whatever this is that we're doing here, Michael. <laughs> but, no. but, you know, I hear that all the time. That's, that's one thing that's very consistent amongst the people that, that I hear from is I wasn't able to or I didn't express myself. I didn't 
introduce myself. I didn't take advantage of various social and professional speaking opportunities. So right. we find that people, uh, they kind of limit uh, their opportunities and their ability to interact with other people and limit, so they, they place a, a pretty big limitation on their social life and their professional life, right? Yes, definitely. That always happens. Uh, it happened to me. And actually in my family, I have seen my father also used to suffer from this. So mm. I have seen him also not talking uh, in a public uh, situation, though now he has overcome it a lot um, by himself. Mm. So I can see the difference uh, when, what he used to do earlier and what he does now. I can see the, the difference. So yeah, I know how it feels when you're actually getting stuck and stuttering. Yeah. Now, you may have kind of already answered this, so then you decided that you wanted to do something about it because of all of your speaking, what, uh, your speaking requirements, if you will, right? That, that you needed to teach. Yeah, and I mean, that was like the impulse the impetus that gave me, okay, I should do something. I have been thinking about doing something for a long time, mm -hmm. uh, but back in India, I never really you know, had the chance or whatever. I don't know, in India, we take this therapy sessions or all these things as something as a, as, as not a very good thing. It's not in a very good light. Uh, yeah, I understand. So, yes. So I never had done that in India, but before I came to America, I went to a doctor just for a medical checkup, and he said that, why don't you try this? Why don't you try some speech therapy? That might help you. But okay. I didn't have any time there, and after I came here, and I had to teach all these classes, and I really felt that, yeah, I should do this, okay. because otherwise it's really hampering my own progress. Yeah. Now, here's the question. So you, so you made a decision that you needed to do something. Uh, yeah, I'm just some guy on the internet, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so what made you choose me, choose this program, the Pro 90D speech system? It's now the Pro 90D 3.0, but maybe when somebody's watching, it could be 10.0, I don't know. <laughs> but the foundation's the same. But what made you choose me? There's licensed speech therapists out there, there's other programs, there's one program in particular that promises to help you stop stuttering in three days. And I believe that 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 person probably can help you stop stuttering, right, in three days or less maybe. But, and we'll, we'll kind of talk about this a little later, but so why didn't you choose a program like that? Why did you choose me? And then we'll kind of talk about uh, why maybe you can stop in a, a few days, but but what happens after that? Like what happens two weeks, 30 days, six months after that? And so what made you choose me? Well, so when I thought about that, at first I thought I'll see if there are any speech therapists nearby, near where I live, mm -hmm. or if there's anyone in my university who is trying to help students like them, I mean, like me. Uh, so, but I couldn't find anyone at that time though. Recently, I found a professor who works on this and he offered me that, he told me if you want to practice your speech, you can just come to me and practice it. I, I'll just uh, tell you how your speech is improved, whatsoever, so it's fine, I will see. Uh, but anyways, at that time, I didn't know anyone here and so I was looking online and I, was, I saw there are a lot of programs we said they could cure stuttering and everything, but uh, then I also I also read somewhere that there's really no cure as such. Uh, so I was kind of apprehensive about joining any of those that said they could cure. Uh, if there's no really no cure that exists, then that is definitely not true. So uh, I thought, okay, let's uh, let's see if I can find something else and. Then on YouTube, I saw a couple of your videos, uh, probably uh, something on the 
21 steps or something. Mm-hmm. I don't remember which one right now. Mm-hmm. I've seen so many of them <laughs> right now. But there were some videos on YouTube and I heard, and I listened to them and I felt, okay, this might be a alternative approach instead of trying to cure stuttering. I, I try to develop a new way of speaking. That might be a better approach. It uh, Somehow I felt that. And then I met a group online in the mewe.com or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, there's some group, and yeah. there they said that okay, they, that many of them have worked with you, and they have now, and their speech has improved drastically. So I thought, okay, then I think probably I should try this program. Uh, and also there was the factor of the money, and so this was kind of one of the least expensive ones. Okay, probably I'll give this one a try. Yeah. Okay, interesting. Good, good, yeah. Because I think when you signed up, it was a little less than what it is now. Right. Um, and when you signed up, I was just working on the, the new version, which is, which basically you and I have been working through the new version. So you actually <laughs> got them yeah. the price of the old one. Um, and for some of you that may be watching this, the, the new version is more streamlined, it's more focused. And I've added a component that focuses on helping you become a superior presenter. So I give you a process to prepare and deliver your presentations. So let's get into that a little bit and then we'll get into the whole habit thing and some of the struggles that you've had. Uh, When we talk about the difference between not stuttering and being an excellent speaker and superior presenter. What, you know, because a lot of programs say, I'm going to help you stop stuttering or reduce your stuttering. And then my program says, I'm going to help you become an excellent speaker and superior presenter. What's the difference in your mind? And why? Uh, in, mind in, in my mind, I feel that just stopping the stuttering uh, is not that helpful because you can probably stop the stuttering, but then that doesn't mean that your speech will be very captivating, or it will. Uh, the audience might not still be interested in what you're trying to say. But if you de- develop a very entertaining way of speaking, or a rather dynamic, a proactive way of speaking, then the audience will actually want to hear what you're saying. Mm. So I feel that is a much better approach to this than just stopping stuttering Uh, and stuttering it happens to everyone uh, once in a while probably it happens to us slightly more but uh, it happens to everyone so uh, Mm. if you stutter sometimes that's not a problem as long as you you can give a really nice speech so an excellent speech yeah I think that matters a lot more than just stopping the stuttering exactly so I want people to be clear that if your expectation is 100% fluency, that's a that's a false, if not unrealistic, expectation because even people who don't classify themselves as stutterers or stammerers have disfluency sometimes. It could be when they're really nervous, could be when they're tired or upset, they get tongue-tied, people use all kinds of filler words, well, um, like, like, uh, so, and, uh, uh. <laughs> right, so no one is a hundred percent fluent all the time. So why should you know? When I say we. Why should we expect that we're going to be a hundred percent fluent all the time? So the difference is that we're teaching you skills that are marketable, that are valuable, where you can actually go out and captivate your audience. You, it's the difference between going to an interview and one person just doesn't stutter but they're okay, and another person is an excellent speaker, all things being equal, who's going to get the job? <laughs> Not just the person that doesn't stutter, the person that's an excellent speaker. So, so there's a lot more value there with that. All right. Now, so tell me some of the, the things that you had to do. This, isn't, this hasn't been an easy process, and it's not over yet. So, no. But you've gotten to a, a pretty high level um, from where you were, and I don't have a video of where you were before, but 
What are some of the obstacles, some of the, the challenges that you've experienced as you've been working through this process? Uh, the first challenge that I had to face was not speaking in my old way, trying to get rid of that habit of stuttering, I would say. I mean, uh, no, the, probably the most important challenge was trying to not think of myself as a stutterer. Yeah. That, that took some time, took a lot of effort. There were setbacks on the way, but now I don't think of myself that way. So that was probably the biggest challenge that I had to face. The second after that was getting rid of my old way. I used to speak a lot faster than I do nowadays. And that probably was responsible uh, for stuttering a lot. I mean, uh, and that didn't really give my audience the time to understand what I'm trying to say. But now that I've mm, slowed my speech down a lot, uh, I, I have more time to think. My audience has more time to listen to what I'm saying. and. Yeah my speech is a lot more smoother than it used to be earlier yeah so changing your mindset we're at we're at about week 10 or 11 I think you said uh, when do you think that happened was that which which week do you feel like you felt that shift well I think starting from around week four or five I was starting to feel that that okay I am not that I I can speak well Okay. something like that and I think probably around week eight or so I felt okay yeah I am not a starter okay very interesting very good and then I noticed that when you and I would meet that there was a huge shift around you know week nine or ten in your speech like your has your speech had improved a lot you know uh, each week but definitely around week eight I saw a huge difference but there was still a little bit of choppiness, still mm -hmm. just a little bit of stopping there. Then around week 10, it was like, boom, there was like a huge change in your speech. So, so would you say that something pretty major happened inside around that time or did something minor happen? Did you just start to say, okay, I need to start doing this more. What do you think happened between weeks eight and 10? I think, uh, well, around week eight, I had a, yeah, I, I do remember at the starting of week, week eight, there were a couple of uh, inst instances when I was talking to my friends and I got stuck multiple times. But I did not think I was a stutterer, and, but I also thought that, well, I need to work more on this I need to do I realize why it was happening uh, I don't remember it right now but mm -hmm. that time I did realize that and okay I will practice this and I can do it so I had the I had the conviction that I could do it so that was the most important thing I would say and after that I uh, after that, the next couple of lectures that I gave in my class, they went really well. So that helped to boost up my confidence. Yeah. And then I felt, okay, yeah, I can definitely do this. And uh, so uh, I think that's what caused to this improvement uh, that you have seen probably because of that. Yeah. And so now, uh, do you find that when you're speaking, do you have to think as much about what to do and how to speak, or is it becoming more natural and automatic now? Well, I feel it's becoming more and more natural as I practice more and more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have to think at times when I'm tired or something uh, that then it doesn't really always come out very naturally. Uh, just like yesterday, I was talking to my sister uh, back in India after a long time. And she told me that my speech has improved a lot. And mm. it was probably talking to her after, I think, three or four months. Okay, right. And right, that's probably around the time we had started. Exactly. And she's like, yeah, I can see the difference in her speech. Awesome, awesome. So I want people to know that, that this isn't the end of the process for you because you can always make your speech better, right? It's not about... Right. 
it's not about okay I want to get done with the stuttering thing it's about I can always become a more excellent speaker a more superior speaker and so that's a lifelong process now granted after several months you know let's just say several months to a year you're probably not going to be thinking about sp speech in the same way that you do now it's just going to be okay how can I become even better all right it's, so you're not going to be thinking about it the same way so I want people to know that it does become automatic it becomes natural you're not thinking about okay I got to do this and I got to do that yeah and that happens within the three months you really just start to not have to think as much yes yes I mean I do remember that when I used to go to some restaurants or something um, I couldn't really order the food I used to have trouble and after I started this program I used to think okay I'll go there and speak in this way but in all it didn't happen always I think about it a lot but it didn't happen always but mm -hmm. now I see at least this last few weeks I when I whenever I have been to a restaurant I could just say whichever food I wanted and mm -hmm. without thinking so exactly exactly wonderful well, I, I think we've we've pretty much covered everything uh, this interview once again was probably a little longer <laughs> than what I wanted <laughs> but I, I really appreciate your insight um, I appreciate you as a client because you jumped Thank in you. you did the work you stuck with it and I've really been amazed at your growth uh, and I know that you're going to continue to become uh, a more excellent speaker and you just uh, have started attending Toastmasters as well right right yes yeah, good the thing that I do want to say that that makes you such excellent client one of the things is that you had regular opportunities to put into practice what you were learning. Yeah. So if you don't, it's really hard. I mean, yes. It really doesn't matter how good the coaching is, how much access to great videos you have. Yeah. You literally have to get out there and use because you know when you tried to use it first, it didn't work all the time. Right. But because you had to do it, all of a sudden you started to see, oh, this does really work. Yes, you do need to practice all that you are learning. I mean, if you do not practice, it will not be that effective. Exactly. Well, thank you very much. I really appreciate uh, your time, Mr. Powell. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and if you can pronounce your whole name for us again, Shohom Pal. Shohom Pal. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. And we'll. We'll do this again several months down the road because here's sure. the thing. Just because you're speaking well now, some people would say, well, it doesn't mean he's going to be able to be speaking well six months, a year from now. <laughs> so six, six months from now, we're going to come back, do another video, and show how well you're speaking. Sure. Okay. Okay? <laughs> okay. All right.